So here we are, Martin, at the right wing and nacelle section. This includes the engine bay and right main undercarriage. Sounds good. Take me through it. Well, the first thing to check is the overall condition of the inboard de-icing boots. Make sure there are no holes or repair patches about to peel off. Looks good. Yes, some holes are easier to spot than others. Here's one that appeared in Berlin. Oh, how did that happen? Well, in this case, a very small amount of oil was running back from a nacelle vent and gradually, over time, it weakened the rubber. And then pop. It blew out when the de-icing system was used. Then, under the wing, you will see various water drains and magma stick locations. Just check they are flush and nothing hanging loose after a service. Here we have the inboard engine panels and cowls. They have various outlets and drain ports. Check overall condition and no blockages. Looking clear. Under the nacelle, you have the oil cooler door. So, this looks like the business end of the plane duct. Yes, here we have six very nice Dautiera Space propeller blades, 4.1 meters diameter. Oh, is this what we're missing on the Boeing? <laughs> yes, exactly. This is what makes the Dash better than the Boeing. I don't know about that, Douglas. Well, well, okay. But anyway, what we're checking here is the condition of each blade. Each blade has an electrically heated anti-icing element. The surface of the blade should be in good condition. Here you can see a picture of a damaged blade's leading edge. Is there a certain way to check the propeller? Yes, you should rotate it counterclockwise, looking from the front. Don't be tempted to spin it the other way, or you could damage the oil seals in the gearbox. Same for the propeller blades. Don't be tempted to move them fore and aft or twist them, as this too may damage the oil seals in the hub. Then, behind the props, we have the engine intake and de-ice boots. Again, just check in good condition. Same for the engine outboard panels and cowls. Check they are secure, and again, no blockages of the nacelle drains or outlet ports. All looks good. Yes. So, let's leave the engine area for now and check the wing. Up here, we have the landing and approach lights. Check lenses are in good condition, and moving along the leading edge, we can check the de-ice boot for any damage. Under the wing, you'll find more magna stick and water drain ports, and NACA vents for the fuel tank. Okay, and now to the wing tips. Yes, here we are at the wingtip, and you can see the primary and secondary navigation lights. The forward navigation light is the primary, the rear navigation light will work if the primary one fails. I see you have some static rigs here. Yes, there should be six in total, one on the wingtip and five along the trailing edge of the aileron. Also you will see up there the aileron gear tab and actuator fairings, just check there is nothing loose hanging off. Right. Then you come to the outboard flap. Here you can see the flap track fairings. Sometimes one of these might be missing and therefore the aircraft will be subject to a CDL procedure. In this case, you'll see it in the tech log. Why is this one missing? This one was removed following a bird strike. Oh dear, not another bird. Yes, they're not having much luck with our dash. However, we must continue. Moving back to the engine area, we have the refuel panel door, where we can check the refuel defuel selector switch is in the off position. It is quite a dirty area, which can lead to problems with the micro switch that detects when the door is open. So, if the fueler has problems starting fueling, then give this micro switch a tap or a push, and the panel should then activate. Sounds like you've had this problem. Yeah, a few times. Now, moving under the nacelle and into the gear area. The first thing to check is that the gear pin has been removed. That's a maintenance job, isn't it? Yes, but I've still found them in place. Also, after a night stop away from base, you'll need to remove them. Whilst you're in that area, you can check for any obvious leaks or loose wires. Any bonding straps you can see should be in good condition too. Now is also a good time to check the accumulator pressure for the part brake. Okay, where is that? It is just up there under the wing. What is the minimum pressure? For starting engine number two, we need a minimum of 500 psi. You can check the pressure more accurately in the flight deck on the MFD composite display. If you arrive at the aircraft and find the pressure below 500 psi, you need to get pumping. Sounds like some exercises, so how we do that? First, we need to drop the main gear doors. This means going back to the flight deck, opening the landing gear alternate release door, pulling fully down on the handle and then closing the door again. However, we must ensure the handle inside is properly seated and the door is properly closed or the undercarriage will not retract. Could be another embarrassing moment. Yeah, I guess so. After opening the gear doors, we need to get the pump handle from the upper right nose bay, find the hand pump in the gear bay and start pumping. How many pumps do you need? It depends on how much pressure is already there. Normally around 5 to 10 pumps will do it. As you pump, you can see the accumulator pressure rise, 
and when you have at least 500 psi, you can stop and stow away the pump handle again. I guess you can confirm the pressure in the flight deck. Yes, switch to composite display and you'll see the actual pressure. So, back to the undercarriage inspection. Moving down the drag strut, you will see four tubes. The outer ones are the hydraulic lines for the brakes, and the inner ones are conduit for the weight and wheels and wheel speed sensors. Check there are no leaks from the hydraulic connections such as in this picture. You may also see evidence of leakage on the apron like here. Did that cause any problems? Unfortunately, it grounded the plane away from base until a technician could tighten the connections. Luckily, very little fluid was lost. Then we come down to the main wheels where you can see the torque link and brake assembly. The components down here are not for grounding the aircraft during refueling, as you will see here. Naughty, and I saw a grounding point labelled on the undercarriage leg. Yes, don't let the fueler ground anywhere else under any circumstances. Also at the back here you can see the weight and wheels proximity switches and wiring. Also the wiring for the wheel speed sensor. Again, check brake lines for any leakage and brake wear pin length. There are four brake pins to check. Is there a minimum length? Basically, minimum length is flush with the sleeve. A missing brake wear pin could be subject to a CDL procedure. You can also see the oleo, which should be clean and show around 4 to 11 centimeters. And what about tire wear duck? Any information about that? Well, the aircraft's maintenance manual has a lot of criteria that has to be met or exceeded before a tire is replaced or signed off as still usable. Generally, if you can see the tire fabric through a crack or a cut, such as in this picture, the tire will often have to be replaced. If you can see visible fabric on the main part of the tire surface, then the tire may be signed off for a certain amount of landings, depending on how many layers of fabric have worn through. In general, on the Q400, the tire is often replaced when there is no more tread visible. However, you must get a certified technician to assess the wear. Only they have the most complete guidance available to be able to sign off a tyre. OK, so I guess we have almost finished this section. Yes, just the inboard flap to check and that's it. Next is the aft fuselage section.